Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going through some of the best beginner coding projects that you can work on. And when compiling this list, I ensured to make it that for most of them, if not all of them, they can be done in any language that you are learning. And I think at the end of the day, it's about quality over quantity as well. So making sure that these projects will really be something that will stand out in your portfolio. Before we go any further, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like and comment for other uh, videos that you hope to see. Also, I wanna give a shout out to some of these users here. Thank you for your awesome questions and also for your awesome comments. I really appreciate all your support. Okay, let's get started. Actually, before we get started, I wanna show you something. You always see me from like here up, right? So I wanna show you, I have some really awesome uh, sweaters and this one is Snoopy. Like, how cute is that? How cool is that? Anyways, shout out to Snoopy. I just had to show you. <laughs> okay, back to the video. Okay, as I mentioned, when thinking of different projects that are really great for you to build as a beginner learning code, the things I kept in mind were that they can be done in any kind of language that you are learning, they make a great portfolio piece, and also they are something that will really help you learn. They will push what you currently know um, to the next level. The first one being build your own chess game. Obviously this helps if you have a little bit of understanding as to chess in general, keep that in mind of course, but this is a great piece, a great portfolio piece that you can build. It requires you to not only build the actual board of the game, so building a lot of UI um, for the project, but then you also have to keep in mind the different kind of ways that the pieces can move, the different um, patterns that the pieces can emulate, and that's really important as well. You can also, these are this is one of the projects that you can kind of start small by say, just building a chessboard, UI only, and then making some pieces come to life by some more logic and building that side of things. But then also, if you want to take it one step further, you can keep score, you know, having it be a two player game and keeping score of each side and maybe having the scoreboard on there as well. So it's one of those projects that you can start really small with. And I, I think for all of these projects, something to keep in mind is start small and then go from there. Don't try and build this grandiose project right out of the gate. Start with the smallest version of it and then build up from there. So my number one idea for a coding project for beginners is building a chess game. Okay, number two on the list is build your own calculator. This brings a smile to my face because I think it was one of the first projects I tried to build with JavaScript when I was learning JavaScript. Uh, vanilla JavaScript, just the basics, and it was a really good project. I remember feeling when I actually finished building it so proud of myself that it was a calculator and it actually functioned. I just thought it was the coolest thing. And it is a really cool project just for that reason. Building something that you or someone you know can interact with is already such a good feeling. And it's an easy thing to build in the sense that it really covers all aspects from layout, logic, using different symbols that will be on the calculator. And it's, it's actually, when I first started the project, I thought this is going to be the most difficult thing I will ever build in my life. Like, I cannot believe I can program a calculator. I thought it was so cool. But it's actually, I promise you, really easy to do. And it's one of those things that just like the chess game, you can start small and add on. So start by making a basic calculator and you can kind of go from there. Maybe it's a calculator that has, um, I don't know, it has one side's a calculator, the other side is, the past calculations you have done and they stay stored on the screen there. I don't know, just different things like that. But once again, start with just the actual calculator and build upon that. Number three on the list, I'm kind of nervous to say number three because you're gonna be like, Tiffany, I thought these were going to be original ideas, but that is to build a to-do list. I know the dreaded to-do list, but it has, it's a reason that it is so popular and everyone suggests to build it. And that is because it really covers so many different aspects of programming and really will help you have a good understanding of really from beginning to end, everything you need to know. And I think that's why it's one of those classic pieces that everyone at some point in their programming career has to build a to-do list. What I did when I was building mine though, was I tried to make it more fun and exciting by um, instead of a to-do list, I did a grocery shopping list and I, it was built in JavaScript and it was, you know, I could input different groceries that I needed to buy. And then when I actually bought them, it would delete them. So just a little X there and it would keep on removing the items that I've already bought. 
then it's funny though because it's one of those things that as i mentioned you can continue to build on so say you build the basic functionality of a to-do list then what i ended up doing from that was at the time I was huge into, it was during my boot camp, and I still am, but huge into skincare. So I was like, why don't I build a skincare kind of to-do list, but instead of uh, the items coming from inputting it, having it come from an, a an API. So starting to connect my project and interact with an API. Okay, so this is where the items are coming from. A user can search this list. A user can delete the items from this list. So. Once again, though, just start with the basic to-do list, but realize that it's still very exciting because if you choose to, you can keep on growing that project. Okay, the next one on the list is building a rock, paper, scissors game. This is really fun to do because not only are you building the logic and the randomizing of the objects being uh, paired together, but you also need to build uh, some logic for the robot that's playing against you. What are they going to choose? How is that randomized? And this is one of those things that is kind of like, I guess all of the things I'm saying, but really fun to interact with. So once you've built it, it's one of those moments you can be really proud when you are talking to your friends or parents or whomever and being like, hey, I built this really cool game, like give it a try. And it feels pretty cool to say you built a game on your own and you built the robot or the logic on the other side that's playing against the person. So rock, paper, scissors is another really cool one. I haven't seen too many people actually build that. So it's another standout piece for your portfolio as well. And I think, you know, on the hiring side of things, employers that see that and have something to engage with in your portfolio, like a really cool rock, paper, scissors game, is kind of a standout piece. It's a pretty, pretty cool highlight and memorable piece uh, for your portfolio. Okay, next on the list is build your own tic-tac-toe game. This was something, this is the first project I built with uh, React. And I, I think at the time, I don't know what's in the React docs now because I haven't used React for the last few months, but at the time when um, I was building this a long time ago, it was in the React docs was actually a tutorial of how to build the tic-tac-toe game. So might be worth checking out if you are learning React. Maybe the tutorial is still there. If not, I'm sure there's tons online, but tic-tac-toe is harder than it sounds to build. At first it sounds like, oh, I can build that, that's so easy. But where it comes a little bit uh, tricky is building the logic in to know when the game ends. Okay, that there's this many X's in a row, that is when the game is done. Or if it's many O's in a row, that's when the game is done. So another really great addition to your portfolio. And you know, you can start by just building the tic-tac-toe game. And then if you're really enjoying building it, you can do, you can keep score on the screen of each player, um, make it really fancy, you know, just continue to build based on uh, the simple game you built. Okay, the last one on my list is not very visually appealing, I guess you could say, but very important. And that is building a web scraper with Python. Well, really any language, but I'm using Python because it's so high in demand. And um, I think it's one of those things that I remember for myself when I was first learning about web scraping, scraping data from the web, I thought, wow, this is so cool. This is like a superpower. I can take whatever's on one website and gather that data, whether it be into the form of an Excel sheet or maybe using it um, to build an API with, whatever the reason is, it was a really cool feeling. And it's also one of those things that once you master, it, it, it feels like it's going to be difficult. And the first time for me anyways was difficult, but once you master it, you realize just how easy it is. And it's kind of something different to do than building a UI or UX based project um, with some logic in it, but this is just full on, uh, you know, not anything visual, but more the side of scraping the web, getting that data, gathering it. And it's a really interesting portfolio piece as well to show that you can do both. Okay, those are my top project ideas for beginners who are learning how to code. At the end of the day, start small, think big. And what I mean by that is do not go into it again as though you are going to build the next Instagram or Facebook. Go into it very small with a simple to-do list or whatever it is. And once you achieve that, you can kind of build upon that. I have been, for myself anyways, and I've seen so many other people who get deflated or give up because after a while they have this huge project that they think they're going to build and they get stuck on something or something doesn't work right and then they just kind of throw in the towel overall. 
and it's it's hard to spec out this massive project when you are just starting so start small build piece by piece and you will get there another thing to keep in mind is quality over quantity rather than having 20 different projects in your portfolio if you have one that is just a really well done piece that stands out that's better than having so many projects that aren't really that great trust me i know because i've been that person who has way too many projects that were just kind of like half half ass weren't fully that great so that's something else to keep in mind thank you for watching my video make sure to hit that subscribe button down below comment again what other videos you want to see more of and i will see you all soon thanks everyone